If you've watched Decomplexify's normalization video, you may remember that there was one normal form we didn't say very much about. This was Boyce-Codd normal form, also known as BCNF. Boyce-Codd normal form is best understood as a slightly stronger version of third normal form. In practice, we rarely see third normal form tables that violate Boyce-Codd normal form, but it can happen. The differences between Boyce-Codd normal form and third normal form are subtle ones that only really come into focus when we get more precise and rigorous about the ways the normal forms are defined. This is Decomplexify, bringing a welcome dose of simplicity to complex topics. Let's start by reviewing third normal form. Suppose we have a table that tracks widget sales by month. Now recall that third normal form is defined, informally, like this. Each non-key attribute in a table should depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. Is the monthly widget sales table in third normal form? Let's assess it. Its primary key is the combination of sales year and sales month. This means the only non-key attribute in the table is widgets sold. Does widgets sold depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key? Yes, it does. It depends on the entire key, which is the combination of sales year and sales month. And it doesn't depend on anything else. Therefore, the monthly widget sales table is in third normal form. So far, we've been using fairly loose terminology. In particular, we've been speaking of the key, which is a term we've been using pretty much interchangeably with the primary key. Most of the time we can get away with this loose terminology, but what happens in a situation like this? The storage locker reservations table contains one row for each instance of somebody reserving a storage locker. For example, someone has reserved locker 221 for the period from the 14th of May 2019 to the 12th of June 2019. Notice that the combination of locker ID and reservation start date uniquely identifies a reservation, because you can't have two reservations for the same locker from the same start date. It wouldn't make sense. Therefore, we can define the primary key as locker ID reservation start date. Now, before we ask whether this table is in third normal form, let's ask an easier question. Is it in second normal form? From the looks of things, the table is in second normal form because there don't seem to be any part key dependencies. Everything is dependent on our entire primary key, locker ID, reservation start date. But there's a complication here. If we'd wanted to, we could have defined our primary key differently. We could have defined it as locker ID reservation end date, because the combination of locker ID and reservation end date is an alternative way of uniquely identifying a reservation. After all, you can't have two reservations for the same locker that both have the same end date. And with the primary key defined as locker ID reservation end date, there does appear to be a part key dependency. The attribute reservation end day depends on part of the primary key. Specifically, it depends on reservation end date. So now it appears that the storage locker reservations table is not in second normal form. Clearly, something is wrong here. We can't seem to decide whether the table is in second normal form or not. So is it or isn't it? In truth, it isn't. And the reasons for this are grounded in the definition of second normal form. Not the informal definition, but the rigorous definition. Informally, we understand second normal form to say that a table isn't allowed to have a non-key attribute that depends on part of the key. But formally, the definition is expressed differently. The formal definition says that a table isn't allowed to have a non-prime attribute that depends on part of a candidate key. What are the meanings of these terms, non-prime attribute, candidate key? A candidate key is an attribute, or a combination of attributes, that uniquely identifies a row in the table. In our storage locker reservations table, there are two candidate keys, 
locker ID reservation start date and locker ID reservation end date. This is why, when we had to decide what we wanted our primary key to be, we literally had two candidates to choose from. A prime attribute is an attribute that belongs to at least one candidate key, and therefore a non-prime attribute is an attribute that doesn't belong to any candidate key. In our table, the only non-prime attribute is reservation end day. And here we come to the reason why the table storage locker reservations isn't in second normal form. The non-prime attribute reservation end day has a dependency on reservation end date. And since the formal definition of second normal form forbids non-prime attributes from being dependent on a part of a candidate key, the storage locker reservations table is not in second normal form. The formal definition of third normal form also has to be expressed in terms of candidate keys and non-prime attributes. Recall that the informal definition of third normal form said each non-key attribute in a table should depend on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. The formal version of the definition would be a little more unwieldy. It would say something along the lines of each non-prime attribute in a table should depend on every candidate key. It should never depend on part of a candidate key, and it should never depend on other non-prime attributes. Ensuring that a table is in third normal form is a very effective way of safeguarding it from the most common types of data anomalies. But the definition of third normal form does have an obscure loophole in it, a weakness that allows certain rare table structures to be in third normal form, despite being vulnerable to the types of problems third normal form was intended to prevent. Let's look at an example of one of these table structures. Suppose we have a table called Most Popular Movies of the Year. This table tells us about the three most popular movies released in a given year. For example, the second row indicates the second most popular movie released in 2008 was Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which was released in May 2008. And to make things simple, let's assume in this scenario that movie name uniquely identifies a movie. In other words, we never get multiple movies that share the same name. When it comes to picking a primary key for this table, we have three candidates to choose from. The candidate keys are 1. Movie name 2. Release year popularity ranking 3. Release year and month popularity ranking Notice that every single attribute in the table belongs to at least one candidate key. In other words, every attribute is a prime attribute. There aren't any non-prime attributes. The issue with this table is that the attribute release year is dependent on release year and month. As a result, it's possible for the table to contain inconsistent data, data that contradicts itself. For example, if Kung Fu Panda's release year and month had been wrongly entered as 2018-06, then the release year and month would conflict with the release year of 2008. We might expect that the most popular movies of the year table would violate third normal form. In fact, we might even expect that it would violate second normal form. But strangely enough, it violates neither. The most popular movies of the year table is in third normal form. Remember, the definition of third normal form is each non-prime attribute in a table should depend on every candidate key, it should never depend on part of a candidate key, and it should never depend on other non-prime attributes. The definition is telling us about what sorts of things non-prime attributes can and can't depend on. But the most popular movies of the year table doesn't have any non-prime attributes, so none of the restrictions the definition lays down are relevant to it. And that is why the most popular movies of the year table is in third normal form. This type of loophole is what led to the need to devise a stronger version of third normal form. The stronger version is known as Boyce-Codd normal form. What Boyce-Codd normal form says is this. With the exception of trivial functional dependencies, every functional dependency in a table must be a dependency on a candidate key, 
or on a superset of a candidate key. Let's unpack this definition. A trivial functional dependency is one that is too obvious even to merit consideration. It's a functional dependency of an attribute on itself, for example, popularity ranking is dependent on popularity ranking, or a functional dependency of an attribute on a combination of itself and something else. For example, popularity ranking is dependent on the combination of popularity ranking and movie. Trivial functional dependencies are inevitable in any table, so obviously we're allowed to have them. The part of the definition in parentheses is also obvious in its own way. A superset of a candidate key means the combination of the candidate key's attributes plus other attributes. Since Boyce-Codd normal form permits dependencies on candidate keys, it clearly also has to permit dependencies on supersets of candidate keys. For example, if within a customer table there's an attribute called customer email address, which is dependent on customer ID, then customer email address is clearly also going to be dependent on the combination of customer ID and some other attribute, like customer surname. We can, if we wish, rephrase the Boyce-Codd normal form definition by making use of a new term, superkey. A superkey simply means a candidate key or a superset of a candidate key. So we can rephrase the definition as, with the exception of trivial functional dependencies, every functional dependency in a table must be a dependency on a superkey. The most popular movies of the year table is not in Boyce-Codd normal form, because release year is dependent on release year and month, and release year and month is not a superkey. How can we fix the most popular movies of the year table so that it complies with Boyce-Codd normal form? One way would be to replace the release year and month attribute with a release month attribute, like this. Now, the year and the month are no longer bound together in a single release year and month column, which means release year is no longer dependent on it. The resulting table is in Boyce-Codd normal form. To sum things up, Boyce-Codd normal form overcomes a loophole in the definition of third normal form. But this loophole is an obscure one, which only really becomes apparent when our definitions are expressed in a suitably formal and rigorous way. In the day-to-day -day practice of database design, there's really no need to get bogged down in formality. Ignoring trivial and obvious types of dependency, we can express Boyce-Codd normal form informally like this. Every attribute in a table should be dependent on the key, the whole key, and nothing but the key. And it's worth bearing in mind that in this definition, the key is really shorthand for every candidate key. This brings us to the end. If you have any comments or questions about this account of Boyce-Codd normal form, please go ahead and post them in the comment section below. And if you have any suggestions for other complex topics that you'd like to see explained on Decomplexify, let me know in the comments. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. So long, and thanks for watching.